I raised and loved my husband's child with another woman as my own flesh and blood. But after 10 years, I was abandoned by his family. Life is as fleeting as lime wash. My fate is miserable to the core. When I was young, I married a philandering man. He cheated on me with my best friend. And when my husband died, I was disowned by his family, my husband's family had a silkworm farming business. I went from being a mulberry leaf picker to becoming his wife. Not long after we married, I hired my close friend N, who was unemployed, to work on silkworm cultivation out of goodwill. Little did I expect N would become the source of all the pain in my later life. After two years of working, N developed feelings for my husband. I discovered it and tried every way to prevent it but to no avail. Even when N quit her job and moved to another commune at my urging, my husband still came to find her. N also knew it was wrong to fool around with her friend's husband but she couldn't escape moments of weakness, then the two of them had a child together. The day I found out N was pregnant, it was as if the rest of my life had died. Seeing that I had been married for some time without children, my mother-in-law allowed her son to bring N home to give birth, to console me and prevent me from divorcing which would cause the family to lose the new weaving mill's manager. My mother-in-law said she would only accept her grandchild not N. After giving birth, N had to leave the family. But N didn't get a chance to go anywhere. She passed away after giving birth to my husband's daughter. N's sudden departure devastated my husband. I rarely saw him smile anymore but I also didn't see him go out partying anymore, perhaps losing the woman he loved and becoming a father changed my husband. He matured more, knew to take care of the family, and lived up to his responsibility as a husband. Of course, he still didn't love me as I hoped, as for me, I loved baby T, my husband's child, as my own flesh and blood. Holding T since she was born, I adored her hands and feet and naturally saw her as my child. Perhaps that's why my husband was grateful and changed his temperament, knowing to provide for the family more, when baby T turned two, I got pregnant. At that time, my mother-in-law was clearly happy. She had long awaited the day I gave birth to a grandson for her. She was certain I would have a boy so she doted on me tremendously. But I disappointed her. I gave birth to a girl, also in the fall just like N, had before. My mother-in-law changed her attitude, openly giving me the cold shoulder, also from then, I alone had to care for and raise my two daughters. Because I didn't give birth to a son, my husband also didn't have a say in the family. His parents also hesitated to transfer the house my husband and I were living in to his name. Meanwhile, the elders transferred and completely split off a portion of land to give to their younger son. Seeing the injustice, my husband and I didn't have any land to plant roots, so I complained to my husband. Whenever I spoke up, he would say, our parents must be keeping the remaining portion for us. When they get old and frail, they will give it to us anyway. After all, we will be the ones supporting them. Land and dirt, you can't take it with you when you die, but he didn't get to see that day come. When our child turned five, he unfortunately got into an accident and passed away. My child and I were left desolate in the now empty house. During this time, I was still working for my parents-in-law and brother-in-law. In recent years, my brother-in-law's family suffered business losses, forcing them to sell off land to pay debts. Even the weaving mill was dissolved. The house my child and I were living in was also included in the land area that had to be sold. I brought this issue up with my parents-in-law but only received a response that deeply hurt me. They had already given all their assets to their younger son, because my husband and I didn't have a son to continue the family line and ancestral rights, we were not given a share of the assets, now, I am extremely confused. I don't know where my and my children's lives will end up. I've never been in a situation where my and my children's future depends so much on others. What should I do now?